Oil Spill Response Limited, OSRL, has recently introduced a jet-based aerial dispersant system, thus ensuring that our capabilities evolve to deliver the most effective and efficient response for industry. The concept of a jet-based dispersant aircraft and the advantages that this would deliver were developed by the Joint Industry Project, JIP an industry-funded initiative set up to ensure the adoption of best practices throughout the oil spill response sector. The result is the Boeing 727 TERSA system. In the unlikely event of a spill, the TERSA system can be airborne and en route anywhere in the world within four hours of a member mobilising OSRL. The Boeing 727 TERSA system is the world's first jet-based aerial dispersant capability. The system consists of seven interconnecting 2,200 litre tanks and a powerful pumping system. This is capable of delivering between 500 and 1,200 litres of dispersant per minute out of specially designed removable boom arms at the back of the aircraft. All operations, from the filling of the system to the spraying of dispersant are controlled remotely by the aircraft and flight engineers from designated panels in the cockpit. One of the main advantages of this new platform is its ability to fly high and fast, arriving at its required location faster than any previous dispersant system. OSRL provide one aircraft and system on standby, with a second provided as a backup to cover any unserviceability. The first point of contact for a client will be OSRL's Emergency Operations Centre, where a duty manager is on call 24 okay, hours a day, 365 um, days a year, to take a response call. Yeah, Paul, so the client wishes to mobilise the 727. Can you please look at availability to get this person into Lagos? Yeah, no problem. The first piece of information the duty manager will require in regards to the TERSA system is whether it is to be scrambled and heading out to a potential spill location, or whether it's a notification call in which case the aircraft is put on a heightened state of standby, ready to be deployed as soon as a final decision is made. The duty manager will also need to know whether there's a requirement to fill the system with dispersant prior to the initial mobilisation, or whether a remote dispersant stockpile will be utilised. This is a major consideration for our clients, as a dispersant compatible with the system will have to be identified. Once a mobilisation form is received from a client, the duty manager will contact the T2 operations team in Doncaster, pass on important details of the incident and ask them to activate the aircraft and crew. Good afternoon, 2XL operations, Stefan speaking. Well, on receipt of this scramble call, the ops controller will contact me as the duty manager for T2 and we'll go through together the information they've received from OSRL. What I anticipate is that we'll route via Tenerife uh, okay. and then probably directly into Lagos. It's my job then to determine at what stage we initiate a call to the crew. Uh, if we're trying to get the aircraft airborne on a scramble, which will be within four hours, then we'll call the crew pretty much straight away. Uh, when the crew have assembled, it'll be my job to brief them. In the interim, we'll have the opportunity to determine the routing of the aircraft, uh, be it one hop or two hops on the same day. A notification is slightly different from the scramble in that we obviously want to prepare the aircraft, it's a heightened state of readiness, but we may hold the crew back at their uh, home positions because that will allow us then to utilise more of their hours if we delay them coming in straight away. The notification is something where perhaps the customers of OSRL haven't yet decided the scale of the spill, but they recognise that there is a problem. From the OSRL duty manager, obviously we'll get the location of the spill, uh, potentially the magnitude okay. as well. But there are a couple of factors that would really help yep. us at that point. First of all, we need to make sure that a work order has been agreed with uh, the customers. Uh, and secondly, we need to have a good feel for whether or not the dispersant needs to be loaded here or whether we'll be using a stockpile down route. And that, of course, depends on the stockpile location and also the type of dispersant which is available to us. During this critical first period, OSRL will also assist the client with vital logistics, such as mobilising additional equipment, personnel yes, and identifying dispersant stockpiles.
During the flight planning, we'll be looking at the, uh, the whole route to the, uh, the scene of the spill, even though the first sector is likely to be within the bounds of Europe or Eastern Seaboard Canada. So the first sector is quite easy, but once you go beyond Europe or Canada, then things get more complex with overflight clearances, landing permissions and so on. So the four hour scramble is not the difficult bit. The difficult bit is the second and subsequent sectors. Now to achieve getting to the scene as quickly as possible, we need help from OSRL's ops department, from the members in country, from anyone really who can ease the passage of the aircraft across all the various countries that it needs to get through. When we're sat here on readiness at Doncaster, the boom is attached so that we can respond in the shortest possible amount of time to a spill in Northern Europe. If we're going outside of Europe, then we'll typically take the boom off. That can be done quickly and within the four hour response time. We take the boom off because we can fly faster without it, get to where we're going more quickly, and then the boom is easily fitted by the crew when we arrive in theater. If we're going to scramble loaded, then we will wait for a positive order to do that from uh, OSRL. At Doncaster, we only hold one type of dispersant. The system is proved to carry nine different types of dispersant. So we're waiting really for OSRL to tell us that the dispersant is of the correct type before we load it. Once loaded, it might have some effect on range so you can get to where you're going faster without the dispersant because you may be able to carry more fuel. So it depends on two main factors. One is the dispersant at Doncaster the right type for the spill and two, what are the dispersant options uh, once we get into country. We have three main types of flyaway packs. First is typical ground support equipment so we've got pumps, motors, hoses, couplings, all the things that are needed to load dispersants, either from tankers or from IBCs. The second type of flyaway packs are more to do with the maintenance of the aircraft or the spray system. So we, we carry some aircraft spares and then we also carry some Tursus system spares. So the system holds 15,000 litres of fluid and we can dispense that typically at around 1,000 litres a minute at an altitude of 150 feet above the sea and 150 knots. Uh, whether we fly one long run or lots of shorter runs will depend on the nature of the spill and will be different every time. But typically we're operating between 150 feet and 1,500 feet, coordinated with other assets. We like to fly with the spotter plane Having that extra pair of eyes from another aircraft with sensors on board really helps to uh, deploy the dispersant most efficiently and get the most out of it. We can fly up to uh, three sorties a day, typically, in, a, an, in an average daylight period. Of course, that will vary depending on how far away from the operating base the spill is. We operate two Boeing 727s in the oil spill response uh, role and the, the crews have been carefully handpicked, typically uh, a military background and a lot of experience of operating um, large and fast aircraft at low level. The, uh, the pilots and flight engineers are used to operating in uh, high pressure workloads and uh, in a very busy environment. We did a recent training exercise where we flew both of the aircraft in close formation together. Uh, that was done really just to illustrate how controllable and smooth these aircraft are at low level. They're perfectly suited to it. Flying them uh, close to one another was well within the uh, capabilities of the crews. We have a lot of experience of formation flying. We wouldn't do that over a real spill, but it just highlighted how manoeuvrable the aeroplanes are and how solid a platform they present for the dispersant delivery. As with any response, OSRL are here to provide a service for our members. That doesn't just mean aviation assets such as the Tursus system. We also have expert personnel and equipment on standby, ready to respond anywhere in the world, anytime, night or day.